Hello, my people. Welcome to the internets. Welcome to the score channel. We're doing another live stream today. We're going to help you write some more essays today. Let me get my tunes on. I feel like we, uh, we need some groovy jams to get this on right now. And we got them. All right. So today we're talking about honors college essays. If you guys have been applying to universities and you've applied to an honors college, then you probably were asked to write some additional essays for your application to the honors college. And you might be wondering how to best approach those. And so we're going to talk a little bit today about how you can structure those essays and what they're looking for in those essays and the kind of tone you should use. These are gonna be a little different from the other types of college admissions essays. Usually those get to be a little more creative and show off more personal sides of your life. Whereas with an honors college essay, we're gonna be a little bit more formal, a little bit more professional because we're trying to show that we're ready for the increased challenge that the honors college is gonna give us. So that's kind of the objective that we wanna have in mind. When we apply to these, we wanna make sure that we come off as very professional people and that we're really ready for the honors college and so we're also gonna have to show our knowledge of the honors college just like we do when we do a university application essay already covered for example those why this university essays these are gonna have some common elements like how we show off our knowledge of the honors college is similar to how we show off our knowledge of the university when we write an essay for them so that's something that we're gonna try to work on and I've chosen two prompts that I want to work on today because they're both relatively short and they're kind of similar and I think that they both really encapsulate the ideas of an honors college essay. So that's what we're going to get to in just a second. So the I'll show you the prompts here. So let's jump to these real quick. Actually, well, there's a spoiler. We're going to take a look at Purdue. And we're also going to take a look at University of Florida. But I want to show you these two prompts so you can kind of see the similarities between the two. And just sort of understand better what they're asking you for. So the first prompt here is broken into several different questions. Uh, but we're going to kind of focus on the key terms here. Uh, this is why is applying for the UF honors program important to you? Which aspects of the program's three pillars of opportunity, community, and challenge pique your interest? How would you engage with the program to exemplify these pillars yourself? How does the program factor into your long-term goals? All right. So essentially it, there's a lot of words here that are kind of saying the same thing. Honestly, this question and this question are pretty much the same. <laughs> Excuse me. <sighs> yeah, got a little something in my throat there. Uh, these two are basically the same question, okay? Why is the program important? How does it factor into your long-term goals? You can answer those with the same idea. Your long-term goals should be important to you. So applying to this honors college should help you achieve your long-term goals, and that should be why you're doing it. So essentially, we can lump these two things together. Now, this mentioned three pillars, opportunity, community, and challenge, and how you would engage with the program. So we're also going to need to look a little bit at the program itself to get to understand a little bit more about it and really understand, okay, what does this program offer that I should be like aware of, right? Um, so that's what we have for the University of Florida. And I want, to, I want you to see the similarities that are present when we look at the Purdue Honors Prompt, which says, explain your vision, ideas, or goals, again, our future, same thing as the other one here for how you hope to shape your honors experience. Put this in the context of the four pillars. All right. So we're going to have to look up those four pillars in the case of Purdue, which is why I already had it open. But right there, you see how these are both asking very similar things. Honors programs essentially are your regular college courses on steroids. They're going to have more intense courses, perhaps with more demanding workloads, especially more reading is going to be involved. And these pillars are also things that they try to emphasize within these courses. So what they want to see is, do you understand the program? And have you really like researched it? Do you understand the different types of pillars or the different things that make this honors program special? And have you thought about how those are going to fit in with your goals and the things that you want to accomplish? So essentially what we want to do is take a couple of aspects of the honors program that we're applying to, and we want to you know, focus on how those aspects are important to us and relate them to long-term goals. Things that, how do we think this honors program is going to better prepare us for the future? That's essentially what they're asking us here. And so that's how I'm going to respond to both of these. This one is 400 words uh, max. This one is 500 words max. So pretty similar length as well. Something I want to emphasize as always is that you cannot just copy paste these from one to another. These are very unique 
honors programs, even if they are asking similar questions, we have to make sure that we tailor our responses to each university. If you are just trying to spam every honors application and send the same same essay to all of them, you're going to have a bad time, honestly. it's They can see right through that. So if you really want to apply to an honors college and you're really serious about being a committed student, then you also need to show that commitment even before you get there by writing an essay for each and every one. And while there might be some small aspects that we can recycle, and I'll show you how to do that here today as we do both of these, you're still going to have to make them unique, okay? So... The uh, the idea we're going to start with is the Florida one. And I'm going to start with that one because it's going to help me define these long-term goals that I want to make. And it's going to help me also because it's 400 words and then I can expand a little more when I get to the Purdue one. So again, I want you to see how we can recycle some content and how we can, you know, keep some of the stuff unique at the same time. So what I want to do first is get to know this program a little better. And I'm going to take a look at their website to kind of learn more about it. But in particular, I want, I want to focus on these pillars because they say that I'm going to have to talk about, you know, which aspects of these pillars. So let's get to know those a little bit and see what they say. So I got the website opened up here. Um, we got the honors program. So they right there front and center are the three pillars, but we need to learn a little bit more about this. Maybe, maybe we could take a look at their about us and see what we can find out. Um, they got the first year honors program and then university honors program. So that's good to know too, that there's a first year program that we might want to talk about this, that one specifically, if we're applying as a first year student, um, values. Okay, here we go. This is where they're talking about those different pillars. Let's, let's zoom in on these and let me move them over a little bit so you can see them better over here. So here again, they said aspects, which aspects and right here, they're giving me those aspects. They're saying opportunity. Okay access possibility achievement the future is molded by it honor students are driven by it opportunity allows gators to discover and follow their paths and through the honors program affords deeper connections okay community university of tens of thousands smaller supportive community in the honors program top-notch faculty high achieving students helpful advisors okay so there's also this idea though about forming friendships and professional connections i feel like this is low-hanging fruit this, the way this is presented seems kind of selfish. Like, oh, I'm going to benefit from this community. I'm going to get these connections. I might stay away from this one, honestly, because it seems very easy to slip into a pattern of writing about how I'm going to benefit and not thinking about how I would benefit the community. Challenge through comes evolution, academic rigor, leadership, personal growth, foreign country. Okay, this could be a really good one for international applicants then. The UF Honors Program is a challenge, not a reward for students who thrive on overcoming obstacles and constantly redefining success. Okay. So, oh, neat. Look at that. They got even a cute little logo and they've broken it down by different colors. Wow. So deep, you know? Um, okay. So I think that I'm leaning towards this challenge aspect that I want to talk about. I'm going to go back to my word doc and start kind of making some notes. Um, cause again, we always want to outline, I say it every time I do one of these videos. Um, and the aspect of the challenge is this idea of evolution and redefining success. Okay. So I think I can work with that. Um, now, the idea is engage with the program. I need to learn a little bit more about this program so that I can really describe how I would engage with it. So let's bring this back out here a little bit. Or, whoops, that's not the thing. There's the thing. Okay. So what I want to do here is get to know a little bit more about the courses in the honors program. What kind of stuff do we have? What are they going to ask me to do? How would I engage with the program? Again, that's the key thing that I need to answer here. So... They tell us here that we have, okay, everybody has to take an honors Q1 course. Let's see what we got there. Course archives. Okay, so like a Q1 course, quest program, why the world is the way it is, what they can do about it. All right, interesting. What is the good life? Interesting. Okay, it seems like that's the main one. Anatomy of a story. Say her name, self and society in East Asia, place making, self making. Interesting. I think these tie in very nicely to my idea of this challenge and evolution. And I think that the fact that they're kind of putting these courses out there 
in the early part of your honors program experience is really good. I would like this idea of what is the good life ties in directly with what they said there about redefining success. So I think I might keep that in there. I think that's a good course option that I could talk about. Again, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to go into courses from the honors section so that we can learn a little bit more about their offerings and kind of find out, okay, what do they got? You know, um, let's see what else we have here. Interdis I, I should go back and see exactly what they said I have to do. So interdisciplinary courses. Okay, there's seven types. Good deal. Yeah, so first year students have to do that Q1, but then after that, it seems like there's a little more flexibility. So I think interdisciplinary courses could be really good here. They also mentioned leadership within the challenge as, uh, challenge dimension or pillar. So I might want to talk a little bit about this professional development courses. Let's see if we can go back to those and take a look at what they got. Um, general professional development. First semester honors students of all majors. Michael O'Malley? Is that the guy from Guts? No. Okay. There used to be a show called Guts, and there's a guy named Mike O'Malley who was the host of Guts. Uh, I guess that's not the same Mike O'Malley. All right. And then the scholars have like a higher level one, I guess. So there's sort of a general one here. Okay, but they talk about like real world applications and things like that, like how to pitch yourself. I don't know if this is exactly what I would want to talk about, to be honest. Uh, music and health is an interesting choice. Um, Keep in mind that these are fall 22 courses and these might be kind of like unpopulated. I might benefit more by looking at spring 22 because they probably have that course list already figured out. Odds are if I see it here, I will see it in fall. But it's just good to keep that in mind that like if you're looking at fall 22 and you're going, well, I don't see any courses. Well, it's a year away, so they might not have anything yet. So if I go to spring 2022, I'll probably find more things that I can work with. And yeah, already there's a whole bunch of courses in here that we didn't see before. Um, Communication in a digital world seems interesting as well here. Like, um, spirituality and health actually sounds really interesting. Hmm. What else they got in the quest courses? Truth to power, indigenous values, blues music, culture, animated world. That sounds kind of cool. War games. Ooh, that could be fun. Um, why tell stories? All right. So yeah, I, I think here, based on what I have already with um, this stuff, I think I have a course that I like already. I'm, I might want to see what else is going on with this honors program and what else they have, just so I can see like, what, what else do they got? You know, what else other activities or things do they do? Like these retreats, for example, um, H camp, that could be interesting. Um, let's see, what do you got? What's H camp? Okay. First retreat of the UF Honors Program. Okay, this could be good. Two full days, older successful student leaders. Welcoming and integrating students to the program. Okay, this could be kind of good. And what about trips? Do they got any? Oh, student orgs too would be really good to check out. Again, I, I want to talk about how I'm going to engage with this program and I want to think about that aspect of challenge. So if I can see anything here that might you know reach out to me, then I might want to do that. Um, SHO, social programming, community outreach. That seems kind of cool. I also like this. Okay. There's singing honors and aprons. Okay. That sounds kind of cool. Um, I think that could maybe work into this. Let's see. First generation to 10 college. That doesn't really apply. Prism is honors like through creative and meaningful stories. I actually like this a lot as someone who writes a lot. I think I could get into the prism magazine. So well, let's put that in here. All right, so I've got a couple of options for my honors college essay. So I want to establish a couple things here before I start writing this. First of all, I need to establish what my goals are and how I, th and I think I'm going to close with that too. So I want to open up with that and then, you know, kind of wrap up with that. That'll be my book end on the front and the end of the essay. We're going to talk about my goals, but in the middle, we're going to talk about this aspect of challenge and how it's going to help me. And then I can touch on these two aspects here, these two things that I found and really elaborate why I think that would be good for me. So again, one of the things I want to do here is be a little bit more formal and a little bit more proper with my language. Uh, again, because this is kind of, I mean, 
It's not that you have to be super formal when you're applying to an honors college, but they are expecting a higher level of professionalism than they would be from a typical undergraduate. So you really should try to, you know, you really should try to do it that way. So I'm going to open up with a little bit of these long-term goals, right? And let's start thinking about that, right? What do I want to be in the future? <laughs> Hard question. Um, I should uh, let me let me readjust this window for you guys and embiggen this a little bit for you. There we go. As usual, word. There we go. Okay. All right, I'm gonna redefine this a little bit more later towards the end, but I just wanted to open up with this concept of success, right? And and this ties into this aspect of challenge. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring that back in. That's why I included that from the beginning, kind of this question to get them thinking, how does a person achieve success? And, and I'm pointing out that it is a variable definition, but mine is that you improve yourself one day at a time. If every day you're a little bit better than the day before, you will reach success. You will, you will get to a successful place. Um, so I hope to be a successful entrepreneur in the future. I've kind of established some of these goals that I have. And then I want to, now I want to jump into this honors college, right? How is the honors college going to help me? All right. And we're still talking about University of Florida. said this pillar but I didn't actually say what it is okay so I think my definition is exactly that success is redefined every day Okay, so again, keep in mind, I do want to show these people that I am a strong candidate for this. And I want to make it clear that I can do this on my own. Like I can push myself. Okay. I've already got this mentality of never being comfortable with who you are and what you have. Always push forward, push yourself to new heights. So I want to make it clear that I can do this on my own, but I would definitely be the kind of person to benefit from another sort of pressure on me. Like this extra push from the honors program will actually help me out a lot. And so that's sort of the logic that I'm taking to this essay so far. And, and so now I can jump into these aspects, right? I'm kind of thinking that these will be their own paragraphs. So I've done an introduction paragraph where I touch a little bit on why it's important. I've got a paragraph where I introduce the pillar that I wanted to talk about because they ask me which aspects of these three pillars. Now I could talk about other pillars as well, 
But I want to focus specifically on the challenge pillar here. And I think it's good to get specific about it. And then I'm going to go into these two things that I've found and make a paragraph out of each of those and then wrap it up going back to my long-term goals. And I think by doing that, we'll have a pretty solid 400 words. Let's see. Right now, we should be at about 130. Okay, 160. A little bit more. But that's good. That means we're doing just fine. So we're going to talk about the what is the good life. And, and I might want to go back to that course a little bit here and just see some of what they were saying about it. Like... very nature of the human condition conceptualize the good life all right I can work with this they don't say much about it but I can work with it so All right, we are gonna go back and do a little editing on this, but I think that's a pretty solid paragraph for now. Again, I only have a 400 words to work with here, so we're probably gonna trim some things later. The Prism Magazine is something else that I wanna talk about here. I wanna make sure that I'm writing that correctly as well. I can't remember if it was. Okay, it is all capitals. Yeah, Prism, UF Honors Magazine. All right, so put it like that. That's why we do the research, people. This is the kind of stuff, like, these are the little things that show that you paid attention and that you actually care and that you really want to be there. So make sure you pay attention to detail. That's something they look for a lot in these essays. Like, if you can't pay attention to the little details that are on their website, how can they expect you to, like, be a good student at the Honors College? I mean, come on. You got to be able to pay attention to details. So that's what I just did there with the prism in capital letters. All right. So I'd love to embrace this prism magazine.
All right. So I've talked a little bit about why I like the Honors Program Magazine thing. We're at 374. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go a little over, and then we'll trim, and I'll show you guys some things you can do to cut down. All right, so again, I want to tie this back to my goals and by by beginning where I, or ending where I began, right? This idea of entrepreneurism and me wanting to sort of start my own thing. Um, I, I have to know how to lead people and I think that that's, that involves listening. I tie it back to the idea of challenge. It can be a challenge to understand other people, but it's fundamental. And I, I go back to that idea of redefining success through the honors program and its community. I managed to touch on this community pillar a little bit by getting into the magazine. So I looked for that opportunity, even though I'm focusing on the challenges that I wanna embrace, I think it's important if I can touch on other pillars to do so. And so right now, as it stands, and this is a pretty rough first draft, but I have 430 words. So one of the things we can do to share, shave down some words, I wanna show you some tricks that you can use to edit these essays and really refine them down to you know a smaller level. Um, it's, in, it's easy to reduce words if you look for sometimes unnecessary words or, you know, words that maybe don't contribute very much. For example, varies. I can probably take out very interested and change this for a more powerful adjective, adamant. In a, You know, I'm adamant about addressing the poor quality of education worldwide and hope to promote change by leading by example. Um, so now by using that, I've removed a word and I've made my sentence even stronger by doing that. Um, I can often take out phrases like I believe and I think, you know, you might be surprised how much more power it gives your writing to remove those phrases. Like by just saying, instead of saying, I believe it, I'm saying it is. And that's actually a stronger statement. The UF honors program and its values will help me. This has so much more weight because I removed that phrase, I believe. And it's natural to write that way when you're kind of writing for the first time and you're getting your ideas out there, but try to remove that, you know? Um, it, it, my definition is exactly that. Like I'm adding strength by removing those phrases. So I'm gonna look around for more of those I thinks and I believes um, and try to get rid of those as well. Would love to take the quest course. Let's see, I don't believe. So like here, I say, I don't believe that that is all there is to life. There's more. I could just say this, there's absolutely more to life and just leave it at that. And then I can explain what that is in the next sentence, you know? Again, I just took out, I think that, exploring this topic early on would have my approach. So the what I'm managing to do here by just removing these is gonna be, I'm gonna shave my words down and make this a lot stronger. <laughs> well, something there today. There we go. All right. Let's see. So by taking out all those I believes and I thinks and making that one little tweak, I'm down to 419. That's pretty good. I'm using would like, I think, a good bit here. I'm looking for other phrases, maybe. Um, we could we could tweak this. We could just do a semicolon there.
Yeah, this is pretty good. I don't know that. This could maybe be deleted. Like I just kind of say something about writing and I say I would love to record someone else's thoughts, but then I say I would like to interview people and profile stories, which is kind of repeating the same thing. So based on that, I think I could actually remove this and that should get me really close. 397, there it is. I'm gonna leave it there for now. Um, so just right there, a couple of quick edits that I made. I removed those lazy adjectives, like very interesting, and I put it into something stronger, like adamant. I removed I believe and I think, because obviously I believe it and I think it if I'm saying it, and it actually detracts from my writing more than it contributes. So I tried not to use those phrases. And then I looked for a little bit of repetition or anything that I kind of restated more clearly later so that I could just get rid of it. Now, the next part here. So taking a look at what we got here. I, I think this is a pretty decent first draft. I, I'm not going to spend all night on this, but just so you can get an idea of what I'm trying to do again, if we go over it really quickly, I have established some goals that I would like to you know, pursue this idea of being an entrepreneur. And then I go into stuff about the program, right? It asked me specifically about the program and they mentioned redefining success as part of this challenge pillar. And I made sure to call those out clearly. I wanted them to see that I saw this, right? I understood this term. I even quoted this term that they used on their website. Can I get this out of me? It's like something's back here. It doesn't want to go away. So now what I've got here is this emphasis on the challenge pillar. And then I explain how I think I'm a good student. I can handle this myself, but it would, I would benefit from this external stimulus. And then I dive into two things that I identify from the program that I like. One being this quest course about what is the good life. And also the other part about the prison magazine and being a writer and wanting to do some of that and tying that back into my goals. So again, I'm finishing up by hitting all the same notes that I hit in the first parts of the essay. The idea about being an entrepreneur, looking forward to challenges, redefining success. And so by doing that, I've provided a good sense of closure. Like I started and ended in the same place. And in the middle, I have explored different aspects of this program that I like. I think this would be a pretty decent essay. Obviously, there's still a little bit more polishing to do. Uh, but overall, I think this will work. Now, getting into how I would transfer some of this stuff into my Purdue essay, right? So this is similar. Again, this is four pillars are the foundation of honors college. Well, let's go take a look at their pillars and see what we got. So the, probably this four colors, our mission here maybe would be, let's see. Um, Purdue honors college about us. Where are your pillars? Let's see what we got here. Honors community, honors courses about us. Maybe in the FAQ. All right, there's an under curriculum information here. Uh, hmm. Let's see. Let's see what their fir future first year is. Let's see if they tell us a little bit more here, like basic information. All right, there's the Arnold's College curriculum. We should check that out too. Um, by the way, quick, quick tip. If you hold control and click, you get a new tab and then you don't have to like, you know, Go hunting. Ah, here we go. Four pillars of our education. There we go. Finally. Okay. Let's take a look at those four pillars. So interdisciplinary academics, undergraduate research, community and global experiences, leadership development. Now, um, none of these really tie in. I mean, the community one overlaps with what I saw in Florida, but that's about it. Uh, global experiences, I think could be interesting. I could kind of connect to some of that stuff. Um, now let's take a second look at this prompt. It says, in the context of the four pillars. So I could maybe build a paragraph about each one of these, or I could just focus on the ones that I think are important. Um, you know, I don't think that there's any w right or wrong approach. Don't feel that you necessarily must focus on all four or that you can't just focus on one. I think if you can write a good essay about one of these pillars, if it's really important to you, do it. Uh, but the key thing is to show that you understand these pillars. So right away, I'm, I'm a big fan of this interdisciplinary academics aspect. Uh, I think that's one that I would like to touch on quite a bit. I'm going to copy and bring that over. Um, and again, we'll get back into how I can recycle some stuff from the other one here, but we'll just start there. So we got that. 
Um, I'm not a huge fan of research, man. Research is such a pain. I, for me, anyway. I'm going to probably gloss over that. Uh, the community and global experiences, though, I think could be a really good option to work with. Leadership development might be also good as well. That's a pretty generic one that a lot of these Saunders colleges have, so we should have no problem finding some things to say about that. Now, let's take a look at this curriculum. What do we have here? Um, introductory courses. Okay. And then there's a thesis or scholarly project. Okay, this is interesting. So there is a research activity that leads to a culminating thesis comparable scholarly project and they create new knowledge okay so the research aspect is really important for this purdue honors program and that is going to be a challenge i'm going to need to think about that i think i may have to go back to that now if if that's an important pillar for them and it's so important that they want me to do a thesis or scholarly project um, that's probably something I need to put into this essay then. So I was hoping to avoid that, but now that I look at how much research is emphasized in this program, I think I need to respect that. And this is something else to think about with your essays is like, what do they seem to care about the most? If you can tell that they really emphasize a particular aspect or pillar or whatever they want to call it, make sure that you do too. If you, and if not, maybe you shouldn't be applying there. If, I mean, honestly, if I, if I didn't want to do research as an undergraduate, I probably shouldn't be applying to this uh, honors college. Uh, that seems dumb, honestly, because uh, it seems like they really want you to do that. Now, this scholarly project could be different things. It could be, it needs to be presented in a public forum. There's an honors thesis or capstone project or project approved by a faculty committee in established Purdue research program. Okay, so maybe I could be like in somebody else's project or I do my own honors thesis. So this is kind of a big thing. Like an honors thesis is a big deal. I mean, if we're talking about undergraduate research, they tell you some of the things that they're looking for here. Um, they give you, you know, some ideas of how you can maybe get into it. And I think that's, these would be really good videos to watch if you wanted to really develop this part of your essay. Um, but you see why you can't just copy paste these things. Look how different this is from the other one. Um, they're not the same. They're not the same honors college. Um, Pillar awards. I like that they have awards for these different ones. That's kind of cool. Um, let's take a look at the curriculum. Like, can we get some courses? Maybe PDF version of the curriculum. Okay. No, that's just like the same thing you said here. Um, where can I find some information about the courses? Let's go back here. Let's name it. Get out of here. Let's see. All right. Uh, courses. Here we go. Let's take a look at these honors courses. So contract courses, standard course and an honors course. Okay, but these are the main ones. Okay, these are the ones that you have to do. Uh, they said you have to do some of these. So let's take a look at some of these. Solutions Lab Global Italy, Territory Technological Justice. So cool. Um, probably one of these early ones I would imagine they want you to take. So space time, what's that about? Oh, cool. A sequel to Interstellar, your own episode of Star Trek. That's kind of cool. Um, I, I do think honors courses are actually really, really neat. They have some very cool ones that I think are just great. Um, okay. I think I could tie this into my education ideas. I'm already starting to see sort of a connection that I might be able to make. Um, the climate crisis here. And okay. This is kind of interesting that like this course, I could tie this course into a research idea. I'm starting to kind of brainstorm how I could take research and put it together with some of these courses and sort of tie it all together and show them that I'm interested in this. So I think I think we're going to go back and be, even though like I'm a big fan of this idea, I'm going to leave it, but I'm, I'm going to take this out because I think we really need to emphasize the research factor um, because this undergraduate thesis uh, is a big deal and I'm going to need to work on that. And that pillar is going to be obviously a major priority for them. So I got to deal with it. I'm also going to touch on some of these courses. And I think that like this, this one's interesting to me, solving the climate crisis. And then what else we got? Let's see what their societies are or like their, you know, if there's any 
student organizations I might want to touch in, get involved with. Because again, student organizations and stuff is a great source of ideas for your essays. Let's see, signature program, solutions lab. What else we got here? First year orientation across campus, cooking with the dean. All right, so these are a couple little like events. It doesn't seem like they necessarily have a lot of like student organizations, learning communities. Maybe they call them that. Well, that's not there. Never mind. <laughs> um, what else? All right, so these are like little leadership related things. That makes sense. That was one of their one of their pillars solutions lab oh that sounds fun all right i like this idea they'll get 48 hours before they have to present their solution to a panel of judges i think that sounds really cool that sounds like something i could talk about here um all right so if you're starting to see a trend here, I'm, I'm talking about like, okay, here's something about solving the climate crisis. Here's something about solutions, a lab for solutions that I can play with. The idea that I need to do research and the whole point of research is to give us information so that we can solve problems. We're gonna need interdisciplinary academics to understand today's problems and hopefully come up with those solutions. So I think I can tie all these things together now. And if like, there's really not a whole lot I'm going to be able to recycle from this. the first one here. I think that I can definitely, you know, um, touch on this stuff here. I can take this and copy it over. But you're going to see that there's not a whole lot more I can do with this. Um, so I need to give a new intro to this, this idea that I had from before. I'm not going to be able to recycle any of this stuff at all. This is all specific stuff to UF. I think I might be able to touch on this stuff here as well towards the end, but we'll see. Um, I, I think I really need to rewrite a lot of this because of how different it is. And and again, I encourage that for you guys. If you are just trying to copy paste a bunch of essays to get your stuff done, maybe you applied to too many places. Maybe you shouldn't be applying to that place that much, honestly. If you, if you don't have it in you to write an essay for that honors program, then maybe you shouldn't be applying to it. Like I, as harsh as that sounds, um, but you know, if you're gonna do it, do it right. That's how I feel about things in life. So let's get into this. I'm going to I'm gonna open up with my uh, a fresh intro. And I think that I'm just going to touch on this idea of solving problems and how important that is. Um, Okay, so by, by touching it, tag, tacking on this new introduction, I'm explaining that I want to be a problem solver, and that's going to tie in really nicely to these ideas. Um, but I'm also pointing out why I'm kind of bringing up my entrepreneurialism thing. Like, I don't see politics as the answer for solving problems. In my case, I think I can solve them instead through private activity, and that this is the issue that I really want to solve. Um, so I'm, I'm laying that out there, and I want to now introduce the honors program and why I think it's going to help me, right? So... called an honors college by the way in, at Purdue so we want to make sure we're using the right terms the Peru Purdue honors college I'm gonna start with a I'm gonna get a little cheeky have a little fun with this um, let's let's again make our window correctly sized so you guys can see what I'm doing cool all right so, paragraph two, we're going to touch on this idea of interdisciplinary stuff because they said that was important. Um, spoused mess.
All right, so this here, I think has built a nice little introduction to why I think the interdisciplinary approach at the honors program is a good one. It's a hard word to write correctly the first time, interdisciplinary, it's just a lot of keystrokes. Now we're gonna move into this other stuff, the idea of research being so important. All right, and I think this is a great connection to the idea of the climate crisis class because, like, I'm talking about how, you know, education is uh, of poor quality these days and we need to improve it and science is shunned. And a great example of this is how climate change is treated in the United States. Uh, and I can just jump right into that, right? I should go back and see what that honors class number was just to make sure. I, I like to even cite the numbers. I think it's a good idea. 19903. Wait, no. It was further down here. Yeah, 39900. There's a couple different ones, I guess, for that. Um, so maybe I just won't. I see a couple of them have the same numbering for some reason, which is weird. So I'm probably just going to do the name of it. Yeah. Notice again how I'm trying to cite things that I've seen in the website. So this right here says fractures and it said fractures being developed over solutions. And, and I want to touch on these phrases that they use. I think it's really important to sprinkle in a couple of words here and there that they use. Let them know that you have read their websites. Let them know 
that you are serious about this, that you've done your research, that you know what you're talking about. And flexing a couple of tiny references from their website is all that takes. It, it doesn't take much work, but it really does go away. So, you know, I've made, I've mentioned a course, I've even mentioned a little something from its description, and I've tied it back into my bigger issue that I want to solve, this idea that, you know, we're ignoring climate change and we're, and we're doing that because of our education quality, right? All right, and, and so here I'm trying to connect this back to my idea, and that's where I'm gonna get into the solutions lab as well. That That's something else that you know I think is really cool, and I wanna to touch on here that I really like it. And again, I'm getting into this idea of, I'm keeping it tied to my ideas of what I would do with my research. So, you know, I've touched on the fact that I wanna do this research. I've explained how this class could inform my research and my questions, right? And so, you know, I wanted to talk about how I can get practical experience solving problems. All right, where are we at on word count now? We should be getting pretty close. 426, perfect. So now I've touched on this uh, solutions lab and why I like it. I wanna wrap it up by getting back to my research idea. And you know, All right, I think I came up with a pretty clever little ending right there. It's a little cheesy, but it works. Um, so again, I'm trying to tie it back to my goals for this program, and I'm saying here this this why I think this is important, right? I want to do this research and propose these solutions, and I think that everything I've talked about in this essay really feeds into that. It really supports that goal. And then, you know, I kind of finish off with this strong statement of like, we cannot progress if we cannot even agree on what is right in front of our eyes, and that is the problem that we see today. We have you know, two people are looking at the exact same problem with completely different perspectives. And, you know, when we talk about an issue like climate change, we see how divided people are on that issue in the United States, at least. And, you know, or any other issue these days, we have a lot of divided opinions and we cannot even agree on what is right in front of us. Even though we're all looking at the same thing, we're seeing different things. And that's kind of the point that I want to make here. We have to learn to see. We have to learn how to analyze and interpret things. And so I want to see how to learn. You see what I did there? A little, a little switcheroo uh, is a nice way to end this. Let's see where my word count is at now. I think I'm still within my 
I think I'm still within my 500 limit. 510. Okay, got to got to cut 10. Um All right. Let's see. I might be able to get rid of this. This sentence is kind of meh. Let's see. I don't understand how we can tailor our education to create a memory. Okay, this this also shouldn't be a question mark anymore. Hmm. I like to read backwards, by the way, when I edit. I don't know if you notice this. I'm starting from the bottom and moving my way back up because, like, this is sort of, I don't know, it just it mentally kind of makes sense to me. I'm weird. I, I find it easier to spot errors and spot things when I go in reverse order for some reason, kind of reading one sentence at a time, but backwards. Sometimes just going through the same text backwards can help you find things. I, it's something I've always done. It's weird. Uh, I have a, just that tendency when I'm analyzing to kind of, if I know the content, to go to the end and go back. So that may not be the best way to do it, but that's how I like to do it. I think I could take out this little extra phrase to the extent that it does. I, I, I could just leave it at emphasizes research. That's a that's a good bunch of extra words that we don't need. Um, and I think I could also just maybe take this out. I mean, I didn't say which areas. So if I'm not going to say anything specific, I could probably just take that out. And with those two things I've deleted, I should be down within 493. Yeah, that'll work. So let's review a little bit of what I've just done here. Um, again, I could not really copy paste much at all. I think the only thing I copy pasted here was this stuff. I think two sentences from my previous essay made it into my next one. And honestly, that's how it has to be. If you're going to write coherent honors college essays for different universities you really need to take a look at each one and what their offerings are i identified very different aspects and very different pillars even though they're talking about similar things community opportunity challenge you know they're very different in what their focus is purdue clearly is far more focused on research while you know i see the university of florida honors program is being a lot more focused on the community and and about the engagement with everybody else i saw a lot more student led organizations and and ex, you know those trips and h camp there seemed to be a much greater emphasis on community and this this idea of being challenged in your courses than in purdue where i saw a lot more emphasis on research and a lot on problem solving which i really like so i see how those two things go hand in hand and i decided to put them together so because I see that those two programs are so different, I couldn't really work with the same material. I had to redesign it. And because I'm trying to use specific terms from each one and specific elements from each one, there's no way I'm going to be able to recycle those things. And if you are, you're messing up. So this is the key thing. Get specific, identify the key components of the honors program that you want to talk about, right? What are the most important components to you? And then identify things in that program that can help you explore those aspects. So in my case, if it was the challenge aspect, you know, I looked for things that I thought could be a good challenge and also things that related to those aspects of challenge, the idea of your personal evolution and redefining success. I felt like that course, what is the good life? And that prison magazine would give me a good opportunity to explore that aspect really well. And that's why I chose those elements for the essay. And I think it came out pretty well. In the second case, you know, I saw that re originally I didn't want to write about research, but then when I saw how much research was valued at Purdue's honors program, I said, okay, I got to do that. And because it was such a big deal, I decided to revamp my whole essay and focus instead on a research project related to that topic that I brought up at the beginning of the first essay and at the beginning of this one, but that research aspect became much more important. And so I started thinking about how those other things that I found in the program would connect with that research and prepare me to do that research and ultimately help me achieve my long-term goal, which is doing something based on that research. So that's what you want to do with these honors programs. You really need to break them down and look at what is the prompt asking you to focus on and then really do your research, get a course, get, you know, some extra experiences or student organizations, find a few key things within that 
program that you can use. All I really did was find two. I found a course and one other experience, right? What is the good life? Prism Magazine. Solving the climate crisis course, Solutions Lab. I picked two things and I attached those two things to a couple of the aspects or pillars that they wanted to talk about. Since I had more words to use for Purdue, I was able to develop the idea a little bit more with the research connection. And since I saw that research was so important, I did that as well. So I think these would be good essays. I think I could get in. I don't know if I would get into my honors college application if I did these. I think I would though. I think I, I, think I got it, all right? Um, and hopefully that helps you guys out too as you write your essays for your honors college applications. If you need more help, you can go to propuscore.com and hit us up. Um, next week, I'm going to be doing a Q&A day, just hanging out here with you guys, talking because I'm going to be going back to the States. We are cooking up some awesome university visits for the United States of America. I'll be up there in the cold winter month of January. So you're going to get to see what snow looks like. And uh, we're going to see how well I can film a university in the freezing cold. Looking forward to that. I've done it before. I can do it again. Um, but yeah, we're cooking up a nice trip already. Got a few universities signed up for this one. So um, it's going. We happening. We doing it. And uh, I'll be telling you guys a little bit more about that next week. So if you want to check it out, you can subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next week at live. After that, I'll be taking a few weeks off for the holidays. From the live streams, there will still be Thursday content coming out every week. Without fail, do not worry. Every Thursday, I will be here for you, my people. All right. So that is all I got for you tonight. Have a good night.